Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Wayne's World, brought to us by THQ. Wayne's World, for the Game Boy, based on the film of the same name, plays very similarly to the NES version, having you play as both Wayne and Garth, battling through different platforming-esque levels, being attacked by televisions, bodyguards, musical instruments, and some other odd things. While it does play very similarly to the NES version, there are some differences as far as some of the level design and basic setup, but the graphical style is pretty much identical. So here we go with Wayne's World for the Nintendo Game Boy. Of course, Wayne's World is not only based on the film, but also based on the skit from Saturday Night Live. While the film focuses around Wayne and Gar's local cable access show being picked up by a major network, the game, however, doesn't give you a whole lot of story of what exactly you're doing before and after each of the levels. You just kind of run through and get to the end of the level while avoiding as many enemies as you can. At the start of the game, you get Wayne and Garth giving you a decent amount of story before you're able to enter into the first level. After the intro, you'll then be treated to a demo, which you can then press start at any time in order to actually start up the game. After pressing start, we're dropped into the first level. Here, we're playing as Garth, being attacked by various different drum-like instruments. You can see at the top of the screen you have a timer, which you can pick up different T letters set around in order to increase that timer. You have your health bar, as well as your total extra lives, which are represented by the little people symbols above that. You also have the Wayne's World logo in the left corner and your score in the upper right. You can power up your weapon by picking up the letter P that is dropped from different enemies. For Garth, he uses a gun. Unfortunately for Wayne, however, he uses his Kung Fu action, which doesn't serve as well of a weapon. The weird thing though about Garth's weapon is you actually have to pull out the weapon before you're able to use it, though you can use it unlimitedly. The second level has us playing as Garth, being attacked by saxophones and other musical instruments. Picking up the letter E spread throughout will increase our energy total. It takes a while to get used to Wayne's attack, and throughout you can actually run into a giant guitar floating in the air, and then you get this very weird cutscene of a frozen picture of Wayne as it shakes uncontrollably. I think you also get a large set of points for doing that as well, though it's just kind of a weird thing overall. Since Wayne's attack is actually a kick, it takes a lot of timing here. Figuring out how exactly to hit all the enemies can be a pain, and at the end of the first level you must battle kind of a boss, a giant set of records that slowly depletes as it throws out the records or you kick them away. Once the entire tower has been depleted, you move on to the next level. Next up is one of the many donut stages in the game. You'll pick up donuts along the way of the level, picking up a bunch of points for doing so. You want to make sure you also pick up the time at the very beginning of the levels so that you have enough time to get through the stage itself. Overall though, this is really kind of just a bonus level, and there's quite a bunch of them in the game, and when you reach the end, you'll move on to the next stage. All the donut levels are almost the exact same layout. The next level has us thankfully playing as Garth again, so we can use the gun in order to help us out. There's weird bouncer-like guys that end up throwing, I think, cooking ware at you, though I'm probably wrong, as well as you also have these bouncers who stand in place and take quite a few hits to take out. 
Just keep firing at them and eventually they will disappear, allowing you to get to the door and access and move on to the next level. Yep, pretty short level overall. Next up, we're back to playing as Wayne again, so we have to use the kick. Jump to the platforms being careful not to fall down, and use your kick from a decent distance as much as you can in order to take out the enemies before attempting to move to the next platform. The bouncer guys are pretty annoying, just mash the attack button, hopefully you'll get your attacks in faster than them and only lose a little bit of health. Once you make it to the door at the end, you'll be outside and there's going to be fire set along the areas that you're trying to get through. Here we have to battle another one of those bouncer-like guys, so just keep mashing that attack button and working your way over to the right side. Eventually you'll come to another door with a big stage written over it, and you'll complete the stage and move on, well, to the next one. After the short cutscene, you're back in the donut shop. Once again, grab the time at the top end, then just run through at your leisure. Nothing really to explain during this. The next level as Garth is probably one of the longest stages in the game, and thankfully they give you two minutes on the timer in order to get through it. There's cats as well as a few other enemies as you're running through. For the most part, I try to blast the cats out of my direct way and then just kind of go past them by jumping over them. There's also this weird robot that appears and starts attacking you. It jumps up into the air and just keeps chasing you with a giant flying kick. It's one of the most humorous parts about this game, of having this robot, well, just keep trying to kick you over and over again. For the most part though, I just keep on running. Eventually though, he will be able to kind of land on a platform and sometimes be able to actually fly over you once reaching the top of that box and go completely off screen to the point he just flat out disappears. Right after that though, you can find the door and move on to, well, another donut level. I'm sure you're getting excited to see each one of these donut levels as we make it to them. Grab donuts if you wish, or most of the time I just kind of run past it into the end and make it to the next stage. The next level though is probably one of the toughest yet. Here introduces another new enemy, this time the flying television screen. Yep, a flying television screen it has a couple of different pictures that flash on it and takes a few hits from Wayne in order to take it out. On the NES version, since this thing was actually multicolored and a little bit difficult to even tell what it is, at least in the Game Boy version with the graphical style, you're able to see a little bit better what exactly is trying to attack you. There's also some weird worm enemies that crawl along the ground. Make it to the door that says do not enter, and well, enter it in order to enter the next stage. Here, after a few seconds, the whole screen will go dark. What you have to do is run into the different light bulbs on the wall in order to get the lights to turn back on. Your goal, though, is to go all the way over to the right until you're able to actually jump up to the higher platforms, and then go back over now to the left. While the light's consistently going out is definitely annoying, overall it's not too difficult to navigate overall. The hardest part though would be when you make it to the platforms up here and you're going back over to the left if you accidentally end up falling back down to the very bottom platforms or off screen altogether which will cost you a life. Eventually, though, you'll make it to the door just above the door you entered the level from, and make it to, well, the next stage which has the exact same basic setup, having you hit the light bulbs along the wall, jumping to the different platforms. Heck, even some of the platforms seem to be in very similar places to what they were in the last level, and since the background and everything else looks the same, it's pretty monotonous. Eventually, though, you'll make it to the end of the area, which you can finally climb up, and once you do climb up, start heading back over to the left and repeat what you pretty much just did in the previous room.
This place is a little bit annoying with all the platforms and kind of like the way to do the step type thing, but eventually you'll make it to the door at the end and complete the stage. Then, what's next? Well, it's time for more donuts. Same thing as before, same donut shop, still stands, and you just run to the end at your own pace or until the time runs out. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Have fun with the donuts. We're getting close to the end of the game here. In this level, we start off as Wayne once again. What you want to do is climb up to the top of the platforms here, and what you'll have to do is a very long jump, which is a little bit difficult to do. You want to get to the very edge of the platform and then do a long jump, and you'll be able to safely land on this platform. It's probably the hardest thing really to do in the entire game. Then you want to climb up the stairs, watching out for the cats as much as possible, make it to this platform, and do a long jump again. This one not as difficult as the one previous to this. Especially with the camera and the way it scrolls down after you've already landed or fell to the pit, depending upon what happened, it's extremely obnoxious. Eventually, though, you'll make it to the door that says Benjamin, and it's time for the final boss of the game. Yep. For Benjamin, you want to run up to him and just keep kicking him. Eventually, he'll ninja flip off screen. Then, you want to keep running to the right until you find him again and just keep hitting him, move a little bit closer to him each kick, and you'll be able to repeatedly get him stuck, and he'll never be able to actually do anything to you. Once you've knocked him off screen twice, you'll then run to the very far right of the kitchen area, jump up onto the platforms above, and once you make it up here, keep going to the left until you run into him once again. Once you do, just repeat what we've done on the previous times, kicking him and moving a step closer each time you do deliver a kick in order to keep him locked in place. And once he falls over, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Wayne's World for Game Boy. That's it. You get one picture of Wayne giving you a thumbs up, and then the credits start to roll. And as you can see, very few people, of course, really worked on the game. So it's really no wonder that the game kind of turned out the way that it ended up turning out. But overall, still ends up being quite a disappointment. Probably the most weird or annoying part is at the very end, you get another thumbs up from Wayne. Your score at the bottom end of the screen shakes uncontrollably, before eventually just kind of messing up and fading out and going back to the beginning of the game. But anyway, guys, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.